Well, the war can affect certain prices, but not the overall level of prices. Inflation is always created by government. It's not created by economic growth. It's not created by too many people having jobs. It's not created by greedy businessmen gouging their customers. It's not created by workers demanding raises. Uh, none of this nonsense. These are all excuses to try to put the blame of inflation on the public instead of accepting responsibility, which is what politicians uh, never want to do. And Biden right now is bragging about how much damage has been done to the Russian economy, to the Russian ruble, to the Russian stock market. Well, you know, when you live in a glass house or a glass White House, you shouldn't throw stones because even more damage is going to be done to the U.S. economy, the U.S. stock market, the U.S. dollar, when the dollar loses its reserve currency status. Bonds are now lower and yields higher than when the Russia invasion of Ukraine. So what's trumping the political or geopolitical risk as far as bonds being a safe haven is the greater threat of inflation and consumers realize what's in store for them because they're still getting a lot of propaganda from the government and the media that the worst is behind us. And of course, all the inflation is simply a function of Russia and Putin. In fact, the Biden administration and all of the minions are now talking about Putin's price hikes. Like every time a price goes up, it's all about Putin, the Putin price hikes, as if the U.S. has absolutely nothing to do with it. We're taking the Federal Reserve completely off the hook. And Biden right now is bragging about how much damage has been done to the Russian economy, to the Russian ruble, to the Russian stock market. Well, you know, when you live in a glass house or a glass White House, you shouldn't throw stones because even more damage is going to be done to the U.S. economy, the U.S. stock market, the U.S. dollar, when the dollar loses its reserve currency status. Powell refuses to call Congress out and mention that the driving force behind all the inflation that they've been creating is reckless government spending. And as long as the government keeps spending, inflation is going to get worse. And so is the current financial crisis. And nobody wants to admit we're in a financial crisis. It is worse than the one we had in 2008. It's just getting started. Ultimately, the Fed is going to cut, but it's going to cut as inflation is accelerating. In fact, a lot of people who are rich end up benefiting from inflation because inflation also pushes up the value of assets that a lot of rich people own. But unfortunately, a lot of middle class Americans don't own those assets. They just get stuck with the bill. They earn wages, but their wages don't rise nearly as much as the cost of living. And so even though they get a bigger paycheck, they're actually earning less because when they go to spend those dollars, they can't buy nearly as much stuff. And that's why inflation is the worst way to pay for government. It's the most regressive form of taxation. It hits hardest those who can least afford to pay. That is the, the biggest problem because Biden wants to pretend that we're getting all this government for free. Nothing is free, especially government. And whenever the government claims you're getting something for nothing, it's a lie. They're just trying to win your vote, but that you don't realize that they're, they're buying your vote with your own money. The public is gonna wanna withdraw its money from these banks because the banks are not gonna be able to pay an interest rate anywhere near enough to compensate for the continued erosion of the value of their deposits through inflation. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free. And of course, when people want to get their money out of the banks, the money isn't there. It's been lost. You know, it's tied up in underwater mortgages. And so the only way that people can get their money is if the Fed prints it. But when the Fed prints it, it just destroys even more of the value. And so it accelerates the momentum uh, for a spiraling inflation. Now the Fed just raised rates again this week, five to five and a quarter, but that's still not enough to do anything about inflation, but it is enough to create more problems for the banks and anybody else that has debt that they have to service. You know, a lot of uh, companies uh, 
a lot of people who own commercial real estate took out short-term loans at very low rates a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And as those loans mature, and now they have to roll them over, they can't afford these higher payments, especially when a lot of their rental income has dropped. So they have less revenue and now their interest expense are rising. And for a lot of companies that were borrowing in the junk bond market, they're not gonna be able to afford to, to service this debt at the new rates once this these bonds mature. So the, the bulk of this financial crisis, which just got started, is in our future. We're just at the tip of a huge iceberg right now. But of course, these government measures are not honest. You basically have to double the official numbers to get a better idea of what's actually happening to prices. So if the government says they're up 4.9%, they're probably up closer to 9.8%. That is a, a, a better uh, read on what Americans are struggling with. They don't have to manipulate it. The, the CPI was designed to manipulate it. So there's, there's a formula. They don't just have a fixed basket of goods and just compare the price now to the price a month ago or a year ago. That's what they used to do in the 1970s. They don't do that anymore. They, they tinker with the basket. So the methodology for calculating the CPI has been designed to produce a lower number than what we used to get when we had a more honest measure of prices. So that's by design. The government doesn't have to lie. The CPI does it for them. Well, I think we're now in recession, which was something that I had been predicting. So inflation got stronger as the economy got weaker. Yeah. And I think this recession is just getting started. It's going to last a long time. But when you're talking about families that are struggling with inflation, they're really struggling with government because inflation is a tax. It's the way government finances deficit spending. Government spends money. It doesn't collect enough taxes, so it has to run deficits. The Federal Reserve monetizes those deficits, prints money. They call it quantitative easing, but that's inflation. And in government is getting bigger and bigger, and families across America are going to have to bear that burden through higher prices. Yeah, well, I think we also got some news from the government that in the first quarter, GDP contracted by 1.4%. So I think this will end up being the first quarter of this recession. But this is going to be a very deep recession. It's going to last for a long time. It could be the worst recession anyone has experienced. And what's going to make it particularly problematic is going to be inflation. Inflation is high and it's going higher. So you're going to have the combination of a very weak economy in recession and high inflation getting worse. And it's inflation is going to complicate the severity of the recession and make it that much more difficult uh, for average Americans to endure it. The Fed is printing a lot of money and the value of that money is going down. It's going to crash eventually. What we're doing is printing a lot of money and we're spending that money to buy things that are made in other countries. So it's the rest of the world that's being productive, not America. We're being profligate. We're just spending the money that the Federal Reserve creates out of thin air. But that's inflation. That's the source of the inflation. It's not Putin. It's not the pandemic. It's the Federal Reserve, it's the U.S. government running record budget deficits, being monetized by a Federal Reserve uh, that's printing all this money. The money is losing value. Prices are going up. The government is being dishonest about how much because the CPI grossly understates the degree at which prices are rising.